Freddie Cameron Mitchell. Hello, hello. This is the Doom Show. Richard Brad Jeffrey Nava. It's the Doom Show. It's the Doomed Show. Doom Show. Hello and welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. I am joined by a special guest co-host tonight, and it is Craig from Uncommon Interests. Craig Chaos, I presume? Hello. Dude, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us about Uncommon Interests. Uncommon Interests is a podcast that I do uh, poorly, I might add. Um, I release two episodes a month. I have a full-length episode where I play music that's kind of either been a little more underground music that's maybe not as popular as I think it should be, either uh, back when the music was first came out or some newer music. And I usually try to keep a theme with those episodes. And I talk about a movie and the comic book for each of those episodes. But then on the second episode that I release in the month, I do like a mini sode, a real short episode where I usually do an interview with somebody or I've, or I've got some sort of gimmick going on. Yeah, that can be found over at uncommoninterest.libsyn.com. And we also actually recently released a record with uh, these three um, bands who have never been on vinyl before. Uh, Creeperson, uh, the Jim Parsons Project, and um, the Bad Hormones. And it's on red vinyl. It's called Into the Voodoo. It's a comp. You can pick it up at uncommoninterest.bandcamp.com. Nice. I love that cover, man. Oh, yeah. I totally ripped that off of a... uh, of a comic book that is uh, that hasn't been around in decades and decades, but I kind of took it and made it my own. I love it. Uh, so when you were kind enough to have me on your show, uh, you talked about a film that I disparaged in my book, uh, Giallo Meltdown. Yes. And that's uh, Antonio Margariti's Naked You Die from 1968. Yes, Naked You Die, otherwise known as The Young the evil and the savage or uh, the mini skirt murders or schoolgirl killer, depending on uh, what country this film was released in. <laughs> I went ahead and translated uh, very roughly both the German and the Greek. Oh. Uh, the, the German title is seven virgins for the devil. <laughs> wow. Not really anything to do with this film. <laughs> the Greek uh, translates to, The Strangler of the Juvenile Girls. That is almost like right on the nose. (laughs) A little too on the nose. Germans missed the mark. Greek nailed it. Love it. Yeah, right in there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play the trailer. Man, I looked and looked for an English version of this trailer. I I feel like there's something missing. And uh, I'll talk about what I think is missing from this film at the end of our little uh, discussion. But uh, here's the uh, Italian trailer. It's got some... Nightmare! Nightmare! Music in it. Nice. Nude o quasi nude. Nella piscina riscaldata di un college inglese. Un posto chic, dove le ragazze nuotano, studiano, leggono. Fanno tante cose piacevoli. Nude o vestite secondo i momenti. Comunque, a labbra nude. A occhio nudo. Sono tante, carine, alcune vivaci, intraprendenti, altre romantiche. C'è l'istitutrice. E qualcun altro. E qualcos'altro. Nude si muore quando l'assassino può scegliere a suo agio le vittime, quando può agire al sicuro, quando c'è morte invece di amore. Quei passi scoprono un mondo di angosce insidiose e segrete e l'ombra della notte nasconde il terrore. La bellezza è un'esca terribile. Nude si muore 
in una delirante vertigine sommersa nella corsa di un incubo disperato in un precipizio senza vita colpirà ancora? perché? quando? e dove? e perché? 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 perché nudo e si muore una suspense che stringe il cuore in una morsa che stimola i sensi che violenta il cervello lo domina, lo conquista nude si muore una ghiacciante indagine sui raffinati supplizi di donne insoddisfatte sui più tenebrosi misteri della psiche umana in un ambiente dove morte e peccato si stringono in un mostruoso amplesso you heard the lovely trailer for Naked You Die we're gonna spoil this movie because uh, it's readily available um, I looked on Amazon today and it said there's still copies very cheap uh, the Dark Sky Films DVD yeah they did a, um, a Margaretti um, series that they released a bunch of his films oh, man I love that company they're doing good stuff so uh, when in doubt uh, open your film with nudity um, or, you know, nakedness for someone to die. Right. I mean, you get pretty much the title of the film in the first, what, minute of this movie. <laughs> She's naked and she dies. A black gloved killer uh, takes out a lady. I always remember it being really um, tame, but watching it the other night, I was like, oh, no, she's nude. I mean, right. we see her naked. <laughs> For some reason, I thought they had more, like, carefully placed bath bubbles. Right. Now, I've got a couple of questions about this opening. Okay, one, why the hell was her water green? Her bath water is, like, emerald green. My wife had the same question. <laughs> See? And my second question is, what really was the point of turning up the radio when the killer pretty much just ran into the bathroom and drowned her ass? Oh, I'm sure the neighbors are uh, very discreet in her apartment complex. They're used to that nightmare. That song is probably one of the best soundtrack songs in Italian film history. <laughs> Man, it is so distinct and so brassy, and it's like it's like a earworm. Oh my lord! Like. I was singing it all through the house today, and my dogs kept barking at me, and they bit me because they want me to stop. I'm like, not me! <laughs> and they're like, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> Nice. We, uh, we meet the teachers uh, that are heading off to St. Hilda College, and uh, we get a, a nice collection of... Uh, strange people here the strangest being miss clay this actress's name not very prolific this is only one of two movies she did but her name is ludmilla lavova well first, first uh, uh, uh oh i think skype is trying to kill you i'm gonna call you back hello hello all right let's see how far we get <laughs> I'd wanted to talk a little bit about the opening credits and how we follow this trunk with this dead girl in it. That's right. It's one of those like macabre touches to the movie that actually will come back later. We'll uh, pick up with presumably this corpse uh, a couple of times through the movie and it'll end on a joke with, about a body in a trunk. We follow this trunk presumably knowing that it's her trunk. Or do we not know that? I think we're supposed to be set up for a red herring with the other teacher. She might be impersonating this dead person. Right. And then you have the, um, what, is he the riding coach or the horse teacher? <laughs> yes. What is his name? Uh, Richard. Mark Damon plays him. He's the riding instructor for the horses and the girls, too. 
<laughs> the other guy in the car, I think, is La Florette, which is uh, Luciano Pagazzi. So uh, what we kind of start off with is, okay, you know, somebody died at the beginning, and then we're transferred to this place where the whole film will take place at this one area, this school. Like, we don't really leave the school area for this entire film. Nope. However, we are told that, is it a holiday or something? And there's only, like, a couple of girls around and a couple of the teachers. Yeah, it's a secluded lo- location, and uh, there's less people around to make it even more, uh, you know, quiet and mysterious. And we're introduced to the, what it is, it's only, like, six or seven girls, right? Yeah. The, uh, there's, uh, the main ones, um, well, the main one is Jill, who's, uh, played by Sally Smith, and, uh, I call her Jerry Blank. That's not a real name. What, Sally Smith? Yeah, that can't be a real name. That's gotta be a stage name, right? Sally Smith? Probably. <laughs> She's a British actress. Uh, I don't know much about her other than that. She, and, uh, IMDB says she was a soprano singer. Ooh. Fascinating. <laughs> Did she sing the song? Did she sing the damn nightmare song? No, I don't know who sang that. I wish. That would be funny though. That would be really hilarious. Hell yeah. So who's the first person to get whacked? Let's see. Um the first person to get whacked is I didn't write her name down. Oh hell. It was the snooty girl who got killed. Melissa? Or Sylvia? Or Cynthia, I mean. My notes just skip this huge chunk of the movie for some reason. I thought I had it. <laughs> well, let's see. The girls are, there's Wendy, Cynthia, it's probably Cynthia, Lucille, and Jill. Changeable. Did I lose you again? Damn it. Thanks, Skype. Hello? Hi. <laughs> Yeah, our average time is about uh, six to seven minutes here. <laughs> Don't worry. The magic of editing will save us, I hope. Right, I know. So yeah, the, she goes down to the creepy basement uh, to get her luggage or something like that. And of course, the, the killer's down there and strangles who we think is Cynthia. And throws her in a trunk, right? Oh, no, no. They hide the body. Um, right. That body's hidden. That's right. Drags it outside. Well, here's the thing. When we're first introduced to these girls, I had a question. They're all poolside, and one of them is reading L Magazine. Is that an Italian magazine? I always thought that was an American magazine, because I always see it, like, at the grocery store when I'm checking out. <laughs> well, it's funny. I wonder what country this is supposed to be, because Gialli around this time yeah, usually... They don't even they weren't in Italy that often, but these could all be American or British characters since there's quite a few British people in this cast. Well, I know a lot of his films were always um, like in conjunction with other countries, whether it's France or America or things like that or England. Exactly. No, I really uh, I really love the the school. I really love the architecture. The, that creepy basement is so awesome. Yeah, um, you, you know what else? And uh, I really dug a lot of the camera work in this. Um, there's a scene when we when we're first introduced to Richard, and the girls coming in on the horse into the stable, and you get that undershot with the camera kind of going by and kind of just following her, her and him. I love that. I love that kind of camera work. Man, it's it's awesome. Uh, the the guy who shot this is. Uh... Uh, Fausto Zuccoli or Fausto Zuccioli. He shot everyone's favorite. Spicoli? Spicoli. <laughs> you caught me off guard with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he shot a zombie holocaust, everyone's favorite. Oh, you gotta love the zombie holocaust, son. Yeah, I, I have a, a hearty appreciation for that film. Man, them Italian motherfuckers, they really get into their zombies and their um their murder. They they really like a good murder. That's what makes their country so great. I know, all the damn murder. <laughs> it's not the fancy cars. It's not the beautiful women. It's not the Mario Brothers. It's murder. And zombies. 
Exactly. The other thing they love are lesbian overtones. Oh, tell me about it. There's, <laughs> it's you're going to be hard pressed to find an Italian movie that doesn't either a have two women kissing or two women who were just a little too close to just be talking and having a normal conversation. <laughs> well, in this one, it's Miss Transfield and Miss Martin. Uh, Miss Transfield is the headmistress and. Miss Martin is one of the teachers. Yeah, right. Mhm. And they've got a thing going on. They actually set it up so that the rooms can be connected by a door and uh, <laughs> we see later that they make use of that that connection. Right. But that's such a weird setup for the house anyway because you remember when when she walked in on uh at the beginning when she walks in on the on the lady changing, she's like, "Oh yeah, um this is your room. My, I got to walk through your room to get to my room and like and she tells her she purposely set it up that way it's, it's hot it's hot <laughs> obviously from the get-go she's one of those women that like other women what do you call them oh um lebanese yeah <laughs> oh man you're channeling a golden girls joke i love it i <laughs> know <laughs> trust me there's a reason why that what I like about this couple, these two ladies, is they're not like the hottest chicks in the movie or anything. It's like far from it. It's a May December romance. <laughs> it's it's cute, you know. It's like oh. But but the thing about the movie is that the students are in the film. They're supposed to be underage because as we find out, you know, Jill is only seventeen, and the other ones are supposed to be a varying age, but they're all supposed to be underage. Right. And then we see uh, good old uh, Mark Damon, who's Richard, is uh, having an affair with Lucille, who's played by Elia. Oh, I always mess up this name. Eleonora Brown, which also sounds like a fake name. What part did you mess up on the Brown part? Or <laughs> It's Eleonora Brown. You don't think maybe the E is silent, so maybe it's just like Eleonora? <laughs> maybe. I just wanted to make a joke about... How I can't say brown. Brown. <laughs> uh, there's a really creepy uh, thing that uh, Richard keeps doing with Lucille. I mean, aside from, you know, having an affair with her, he keeps doing this creepy. Yeah, to bang her. What was that? Besides trying to bang her? You're... Yeah, yeah. Besides that. <laughs> uh, the uh, creepy Red Riding Hood metaphor he keeps dropping, like he's the big bad wolf. Yeah, what the fuck? Is he an English teacher, too? <laughs> well, yeah, the school's very small. They have to have an English teacher slash a horse instructor. Right, and, and and even when um the mistress tells him, hey, you know you're not allowed to schedule a private lesson with a student, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. And then, like, every other scene is him in a private lesson with one of the students. Yep. Oh, my God. He does not follow the rules, and I'm glad. Good for him. Apparently, like, nobody ever taught him the word jailbait or um, <laughs> morals clause in your teaching contract. That all just kind of went out the window. It's those big white teeth. <laughs> Tell me about it. He's just chewing on stuff. He don't care. He don't give a fuck. And you know who he looks like to me? Who's that? He looks very much like Eric Estrada. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. Like a young Eric Estrada. Right, from Chips. Oh, yeah. Or maybe even a little before. Mm hmm. Uh, the other guy who looks like Eric Estrada is Luigi Pagozzi from all those Mario Baba films. Uh, like, like uh, you know, we said Baba has a hand in this film. Yep. So, uh, maybe put in a word for him. I'm telling you, yeah. He plays La Florette, the groundskeeper and uh, professional red herring. Uh, also, professional peeping Tom. Right. Because he looks creepy. Totally. <laughs> and he's dragging that luggage around. Oh, man. I'm telling you. There must be a body in there. I uh, know. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> come on. That's a little too on the nose right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, well, maybe. <laughs> it's not like we murdered somebody. <laughs> it's so funny. We'll use it again later. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, not just once. <laughs> we get some more murders. Some more of the girls are offed. 
They get choked right the fuck out. Yep. It's that strangulation again. Right. I mean, and, and, and until you get to the end, there's really not too much blood in this film. No, it's it's tame in that regard, definitely. Uh, in fact, the the most brutal murder is of La Florette. And aside from that, um, the film is called Naked You Die. A lot of people die. Not too many people get naked. Yeah, well, they front loaded the nudity. Yeah, <laughs> Lord, they should have back loaded that shit. Spread it out a little bit. You know, sprinkled it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They shot their load right at the beginning. They totally did. They totally did. Uh, we meet our detectives. Um, I call them Young Blood and Old Jake uh, for no reason other than I just wanted to call them that. You can't tell me that the inspector, the old guy, does not look like the Italian Robert Mitchum. <laughs> he is like a real, like a real skinny Robert Mitchum. Maybe more like a Gregory Peck. Ooh, there you go. Uh, he is played by uh, Michael Rennie. The dynamic between him and the the younger guy is very much kind of like the film seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. <laughs> so this is what's in the trunk. What's in the trunk? <laughs> oh, what's in the trunk? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the detective Durand, the older guy, he's or old Jake, cause I like to call him. He's played by Michael Rennie, who is a super, super prolific actor. Like just ton, like 170 something credits or 117 credits. Some crazy shit like that. So one film for every year he was alive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this dude is crusty as fuck. Yeah, he, he looks old. He looks like he he probably should have been retired from, from the police force. Yeah. Yeah. He uh he catches the eye of uh of Jill, that's for sure. Yeah, right. She's got a daddy complex, man. Holy shit. Yeah, she was not loved enough as a child. <laughs> or maybe loved a little too much. Mm, I don't know. It's Who knows? It's, it's Jerry Blank. Can't tell. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good Lord. So the other detective is uh, played by Franco DeRosa. He's the younger guy. And I don't know him from much. He had a small part in a really terrible movie I watched um, called The Bitch. Was it called Naked You Die? <laughs> Hey, remember, you're defending this movie. <laughs> I am. I am. No, he was in um, The Bitch with um, Joan Collins, a disco movie from the 70s that I saw. Wow. Yeah, it was Joan it was Col- terrible. <laughs> Not surprised. He discovers uh, La Florette's body, which La Florette's death scene is the coolest death scene, which to me feels like a, something out of Mario Bava. Mario Baba is uncredited as writing the script to this, but there's also one or two other people credited with writing, which I imagine that means they kind of tweaked it out a bit, changed a few things. And so the really good stuff in this film is obviously the Mario Baba written stuff and all like the really ridiculous parts like, hey, this trunk's so heavy, there might be a dead body in it is obviously the other guys. Well, you know... Mario Bob had a pretty goofy sense of humor. That might have been his joke. Maybe, but <laughs> even that seems a little outlandish on his part. La Florette is uh, seen like uh, with his scythe. He's you know he's being his red herring self by admiring, perhaps even stroking his scythe, and then he gets killed with it. Of course. Which is the bloodiest part of the movie. At the end, when Richard gets stabbed in the shoulder, I mean he's got like a big blood spot. Which they kind of, it's, that blood spot is very, very misleading, I'll tell you. But, I mean, those are like the two bloodiest scenes of this film. Everywhere else, you know, it's just uh, people getting choked out. Yeah, this is a real gore fest. <laughs> More like a whore fest. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Am I right? Is this thing on? <laughs> it is definitely on. How well it's recording, we'll find out later. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, the dude we've been avoiding because he's the most ridiculous character in the movie is the gym teacher. The, the one who does his exercises at night? Exactly. Exactly. Because I really kind of want to get to this um, attempted drowning scene <laughs> where the guy dressed up in scuba gear runs out of nowhere 
pretty much football tackles this bitch into the pool <laughs> and tries to drown her until the other lady comes. <laughs> As he's pushing her head underwater, the other lady yelling, help is on the way, help is on the way. Then she jumps in, pulls the guy's like air nozzle out, and he runs off into the woods. Oh, man. You got to hand it to Jill, the amateur detective, which, you know, every giallo needs a good amateur detective. She's on the case, man. She's got oh yeah, a freaking CB radio, and she's got daddy issues, which we talked about already. Oh, what the fuck was with the walkie-talkies? <laughs> oh, man, they're just so cool, so space age. But here's the thing. like They've had walkie-talkies since like World War One. <laughs> Sometimes Italy is real slow with technology. They just got them in 1968. Uh, dear Lord. <laughs> it was like a year after they got the telephone. Yep. And uh, another 10 years before they got TVs. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the only thing weirder than this killer frogman sequence is the freaking boiling pit oh, of lime. The quicklime pit. Yeah, like so close to the school. I know. Let's build our school upon this fucking lime pit. Why not? <laughs> Great structural idea. Way to go, planning committee. Do those occur naturally over there? Because I've seen like like a lime pit area in like, uh, was it Lucio Fulci's Contraband? Where there's this huge lime pit like quarry. It's like where, where they mine the lime. Yeah, well, that's probably like um, here in our area of the world. You know, we have sulfate mines. Oh, shit. So over there, they probably got like, like you know, they've got that. And then, you know, over in Cambodia, they have diamond mines where they just murder a bunch of people <laughs> and stuff for diamonds. Yeah. Florida represent. Hey, man. The dirty south. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So Miss Clay runs afoul of the killer, or so we think, because they find a body soaking in that lime pit. Well, hold up. Uh-oh. There was one one thing that, that really, really puzzled me about the um the attempted water murder. Yeah, yeah, what about it? Okay, so they go to chase the guy in the woods. They find the gym teacher doing some exercise, okay, like, what, 20 feet away, maybe? Yep. So they take him in. They don't even... They don't even take him to jail. They take him to, like, the dean's office. They talk to him for, like, two minutes. He's like, no, no, listen, I do these exercises. I'm vain. It's pretty stupid. I don't want people to laugh at me, whatever, whatever. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, well, you can go ahead and go, but, you know, just kind of stick around. So, uh, don't go anywhere, whatever, whatever. <laughs> they don't even take his ass to jail. The prime suspect <laughs> in all these murders who, if he went to court today, they were convicting. Just, he was five minutes away, drenching wet, and they don't even arrest his ass. And they barely question him. They don't even take him in cuffs. They take him to the dean's office like he was skipping school or something. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that shit? Oh, Craig, I'm so glad you caught that. I watch so many of these movies that stupid shit doesn't even phase me anymore. Like, that whole sequence made sense to me. <laughs> Dear Lord. I'm really losing it. <laughs> you are. You, you must be. Because, like, certain stuff I can forgive, and I understand, like, ignorance, you know what I mean? And I've been watching Italian movies for quite a while. I've been watching low-budget films damn near my whole life. So I know when stuff is just kind of stuck in for plot reasons or why something has to be or if something's just dumb. But this year, they didn't even, like, kind of shoehorn in the red herring part of it by arresting him or anything like that. Because that would have made it seem more like, I don't know, it would have been better if they just would have, you know, done what a real cop would have done and take his ass to jail. <laughs> it was a simpler time. Everyone was more trusting. Yeah, yeah, everybody really was innocent till proven guilty. Yeah. But he was damn near guilty. <laughs> Well, I think the hierarchy goes police officer, and then above that is headmistress. 
and then above that is like the president uh, of Italy. That's what it is. I forgot. Yeah, the Italian uh, judicial system and police force works a little different over there. the <laughs> The chain of command on authority is is very much different than here in the states. Yep. Exactly. Man, that was great. I'm glad we went back for that. <laughs> yeah. Right. To kind of wrap things up plot wise, we get Mrs. Clay's body found in the lime pit, or so we think. And then there's a bunch of more beautiful red herring stuff where it looks like Richard's guilty. Well, he's kind of red herring from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Because he's a creep. Right. He, he's a perv. Hardcore perv. I'm sure he's not done anything wrong. Just like the guy in uh, What Have You Done to Solange. What the fuck did they do to Solange? <laughs> well, that was the thing. Like, in... Uh, Fabio Testi's character in that movie is like... <laughs> testes. I know, I know. Fabulous testes. <laughs> he is seriously, like, just heavy petting with the girl. It's insane. Like, he's a teacher, she's a student, they're in bed naked together, and she's still a virgin. It's like, oh, come on. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, that movie's amazing. They just dance right around that shit. Good lord. So the big reveal for folks who have not seen this movie, skip over this part. This is our second and last spoiler warning. It turns out there is no Miss Clay. No, she has balls. <laughs> Mr. Clay. Or this person was imitating Miss Clay the whole time. This person is named Pierre. Pierre. Mm. See, now this is why I defend this film is because of the twist right here. Now, this, of course, isn't the first time that a twist like this has been used, and sure as fuck wasn't the last time, <laughs> but there was no way that watching this film for the first time that you expected this to happen. No way, no matter the smartest Jallo film watcher who watching this for the first time would never expect for that to happen, period, at all. And then he comes out, he gives his reason for just kind of, running amok and killing a bunch of people, it's a little flawed. I mean, I understand he's like, oh, listen, you got to die before you're 18 so I can get all this money. So he doesn't really explain why he just kind of went and killed like five or six other people needlessly <laughs> when all he was trying to do was get to her when he probably could have caught her alone at any minute. But we, we glance over that respectfully. Okay, so what they did was they had a female actress – playing a man disguised as a woman and the only thing that sticks out when you're watching the movie is they have a male a very deep voice doing the voice of this actress so you think it's strange but i didn't suspect that it was a, a you know a man the whole time i'm glad you said that because when we first meet Miss or Mr. Clay and I heard the voice, I was like, is that a dude the voiceover? Did they get a dude to do the voiceover for this? I was like, how, do, how is this a voiceover? Because they're not doing an English voiceover. It's the original voice. They, yeah, I, I thought it was weird. But, of course, you know, at the ending, it makes sense. Right. She had a dick. <laughs> I believe they call that a trap yep. or something. Is that what the kids call it nowadays? They should have called this Naked You Dick. Yes. <laughs> what? A Dick You Die. A Dick You Die. Pierre uh, explains himself like very carefully. It takes a long time to explain you know, the whole plot. But it is really strange that uh, he's undercover and he knows who Lucille is. Why the other murders? Just to disguise... Right. It, it, that he's after her. Right. Because what he flat out tells her straight up is, listen, I'm your cousin. I've been the executor of your inheritance. Uh, I've grown accustomed to being rich. So in order for me to inherit that money, you have to die before you're 18. So naturally, you figure her first question would be like, OK, so why'd you kill all my friends? Thanks, dick. Yeah. No way, Mrs. Clay. You can't have my money, you dick. <laughs> Oh, that should have been a line in the movie. I always said you look like a dude. Oh, burn. The girls all hate you. Went, went. Jill and Richard help save uh, good old Lucille. 
and then the cops burst in at the last minute and well, shoot up the place. Do we want Victor getting stabbed? Oh yeah, what happens there? I, I I vaguely remember that. Well, for whatever reason, Richard is upstairs trying to do something, and then he falls down the stairs with blood all over his chest, laying there. You think he's been stabbed to death, which is not the case. It turns out you find out that later he was just kind of stabbed in the arm a little bit. <laughs> Although it looks like there's been a massacre on his chest, and he's helpless to do anything once. Um, Mrs. Clay reveals herself to be Pierre and starts explaining the plot. And he's just laying there kind of twitching a little and moaning. He's really useless until like the last couple of minutes where Pierre is trying to kill Lucille. And then he just kind of grabs Pierre's foot and the inspector comes and shoots Pierre to death. Well, he's like LL Cool J in H2O. With the shark? What? <laughs> in the shark movie? No, in H2O, uh, Halloween H2O. I thought you were going to say completely fucking useless like he, uh, LL Cool J was in that shark movie. I've never seen it. <laughs> You're not missing much. Deep Blue Sea or whatever. <laughs> watch Naked You Die three more times before you watch that film. I will. I totally will. <laughs> A better use of your time. So uh, Pierre is dead. The day is saved. Uh, we get the strangest thing in the movie which is uh jill confessing her love for uh old jake or detective durand right and uh we find out why well i I guess no this doesn't explain anything we we just meet jill's dad very briefly which is the weirdest little wrap-up is that like literally like a a walk-on role that actor was there Honestly, no longer than six hours that day and got a paycheck. <laughs> uh, I stuck a, a bunch of grapes from catering in his pocket. Good for him. Right. <laughs> but we find out that her uh, Jill's dad um, shows up. We find out that he's a secret agent because the radio in his car is going off. And apparently he's 009. Two, two people better than 007. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, then there's another joke. We get the uh, the body in the trunk joke again. Right. Now she's whose dad now? That was Jill's dad who showed up. Not Lucille's dad. No. No, I think it was Jill's dad. I was about to say, because how in the fuck would Lucille have an inheritance if her dad was still alive? <laughs> <laughs> That's complicated. Very. So what do you think of this one, dude? Well, like I said, I defend it because of the plot twist. Um, I enjoyed that. You know, it's not really that slow of a paced film. And yes, there are some ridiculous stuff. There's a couple of plot holes. But all in all, it's a fun movie. It's not over-the-top gore, which I like over-the-top gore. And But every once in a while, you just kind of want a film that you could just kind of turn your mind off and watch. And this is definitely one of those films. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, Mario Baba had a big hand in the script. Feels like it. Yeah. I like this one too. It's it's. Uh, I feel bad for harshing on it in the book. Like, I think I had never seen it before, and I had a friend over, and we we're watching it, and I was expecting something else, so I was disappointed. So I gave it a harsh review. And what, like a hand job from your friend? What's well, that, man, I'm never disappointed by that. <laughs> but the the thing is, like, this movie is a little different. It's more fun, like the '60s Gialli are. Uh, it's colorful. There's pretty girls. There's lots of kooky shenanigans. Killer soundtrack. Oh, man, yeah. Carlo Savina uh, did the soundtrack. That's so going to be badass. Oh, hell. Like, uh, this isn't top ten material for me, but I do really appreciate this film now. Black Gloved Killer, Convoluted Ass Plot. My biggest complaint, and I'm going to see what you think about this, I really wish this was dubbed in English. I think this would be so much fun if it was dubbed. Yes. Yeah. Um, I could nowhere find a English dubbed version of this. Uh, my guess would be that it's never been dubbed in English. And I actually have the Dark Skies DVD, and yeah. it's not in English. It's just English subtitled, which, I mean, I don't really... Even when a film is overdubbed poorly in English, it's still better than having to try to read the whole movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I understand why this film isn't as popular as some of the, you know, Argento films or 
Fulci's uh, Jallos and stuff like that. And this director, he was quite prolific in his filmmaking career. Oh, Worked yeah. almost up until the time he died. And he did a lot of different films. And uh, this is definitely, to me, one of his best. He was in every genre this guy worked. So why don't we do a, a top three of Antonio Margariti, or Anthony Dawson, as he's credited here? Yes. Uh, what is your top three Margariti? This will be my number three. Excellent. Naked You Die. Nice. Uh, my number three is Cannibal Apocalypse. Ooh. Yeah, which, uh, where's the Blu-ray? Anybody? Hello? I know, right? Get on it! Oh, man. All right, what's your number two, dude? My number two is Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eye. Ah. It's passable for what it is. Matter of fact, I'll tell you the best thing about this film and why it's my number two is if you go and look this film up on Wikipedia, you're not going to find much information about it, but that poster for that film is so bad ass. I'm a poster guy, and visual art is my thing. I'm a guy, and that, that's one of the best posters ever made for any film, period. Bam. You know, I mean, uh, Jane Birkin is also in the film, and, you know, she, who, damn, she's actually still kicking around. <laughs> you know, I think she just released an album, like, a couple of years ago, and she's almost 70. But, you know, she's always great in everything she's done, so... um that's definitely one to check out. So what do you have as your number two? Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eye, number two. Oh, hell! <laughs> I really like that movie. It was one that I didn't really care for the first time. Second viewing, it really took. And I really like that film a lot. In fact, that's on our list to cover on this show. Uh, Naf and I are going to talk about it sometime. Hell yeah. Can't wait for that one. He likes Jane Birkin, but he really likes uh, Serge Gainsbourg. The, the guy who wrote all that music, the super, super famous French uh, pop composer, he is the detective in that movie. Right. So that's a big thing for uh, my co-host. Nice. What's your number one, dude? Dude, my number one, and honestly, it's his most famous film. And anybody listening to this, if your number one film is not this film, we can't be friends. Uh -oh. Because I have Castle of Blood as my number one film. Nice. Barbara Steele. Now, Severn Films actually just released a couple months ago Castle of Blood with um, two other films of Barbara Steele hand-signed on Blu-ray and DVD by Barbara Steele herself. The artwork is excellent. The transfer is so good. You should definitely, if you haven't picked it up now, go pick it up. You're not going to be sorry. This film, Castle of Blood, the story is Edgar Allan Poe kind of trying to be debunked or debunking a ghost story meta kind of a word that gets used a lot in this film is kind of like that yeah. but if it'd be more meta if edgar Allan poe was still alive you know? <laughs> and this film was actually remade eight years later in 1971 by um anthony dawson or antonio whatever you want to call him eight years later in 1971 using claus kinski as the narrator of the film because a lot of people don't know anthony dawson or antonio margaretti had big issues with castle of blood and uh he thought it was slow it was boring and not even eight years later he remade it and titled it web of the spider and it of course flopped and did nowhere near half as good as Castle of Blood, because Castle of Blood is inherently a better film. Nice. I'm going to make you mad, dude. Oh, yeah? My number one is not Castle of Blood. Is it Web of Spider? <laughs> no. My number one is Long Hair of Death. Wow. I yeah. did not see that one coming. I just love that one. I, I think uh, Castle of Blood is probably better, but I just love Long Hair of Death, man. That's one of my favorites. Was that one actually written by him, too, or no? Was that also written by somebody else? Let me take a look. Long Hair of Death, uh, 1964. Ooh, that's uh, Ernesto Gastaldi. Right after Castle of Blood. Yeah. Yeah, so Tonino, Valeri, and Ernesto Gastaldi and Antonio. They worked on that together. And that one just gets me. More Barbara Steele, for sure. She's amazing in it. 
She's amazing in everything. It's true. I did have one runner up for the the list. Um, have you seen The Virgin of Nuremberg? I have not. Oh, dude. Is that your cousin or something? It's my it's my bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's uh, Christopher Lee is in that one. It's also known as it's also known as Horror Castle. Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah. Well, dude, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Hell yeah! I mean, we fought through Skype. We got some serious Skype issues. Oh, Skype beat our ass. <laughs> I'll be uh, editing this together like a puzzle piece later, but I'm sure it'll come out sounding amazing. I do not envy you that. Uh, so, folks, please check out Uncommon Interests. Um, I'll have a link so you can definitely find it. And uh, check out the awesome vinyl that uh, Mr. Craig Chaos has put out. What are those links, sir? Uh, uncommoninterest.libsyn.com. And for whatever reason, it's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. Um, I have no idea why. And also uncommoninterest.bandcamp.com. Uh, we, we got the record over there. Uh, we got some swag over there you can pick up. Yeah, definitely check those out. And uh, I'm on Twitter at Uncommon Interest Pod. Hell yeah. Well, good night, folks. Y'all, I'll talk to y'all later. Hello, this is The Doomed Show. It's available at hellodoomedshow.podomatic.com. For the old episodes, check out the archives at doomedmoviethon.com. To contact the show, email us at doomedmoviethon at gmail.com or at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. For more Doomed Moviethon goodness, also visit cinemasomnambulous.com. Common Interest, a podcast that takes you off the beaten path and kicks your ass. ass. Your host, Craig Chaos, plays you music and discusses films and comic books. So stop on by and listen at uncommoninterest.libsyn.com and get cool uncommon music and awesome stuff at uncommoninterest.bandcamp.com. Don't come running to me when you wake up in the city morgue with a tag on your toe having been beaten to an unrecognizable and coming in trash. Well, hello, my dear friends. I am Baron Martino. And when I am not in Italy murdering beautiful fashion models, I enjoy hosting a little show called The Jello Room. Jello is basically the Italian word for yellow that often refer to cheap mystery novels with yellow covers published by Monodori in the early 1900s. However, it later became the namesake of a notorious genre of films that peaked in the early 70s after Mario Bava, Dario Argento, Lucio Fulci, Sergio Martino, and many other talented Italian filmmakers introduced audiences to a new style of film that incorporated ornate cinematography, a pulsating soundtrack, beautiful female victims, and a black love killer, all together with a thrilling twist ending. Join me, won't you, as I share my unhealthy obsession of Jallo with you all in the Jallo Room. You can find the Jallo Room at youtube.com slash C slash the Jallo Room Show and facebook.com slash the Jallo Room, as well as your closest participating adult film store. As always, my friends, grazie. Ha 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 ha.